Why are you like this? Hey folks, doing a quick video here about Digital Circus, the newest animated series over on Glitch Productions. Which, I just want to take a moment to appreciate the, uh, I wouldn't say renaissance period, but more of the growth period we are currently going through when it comes to like independent online animation. It is truly something else. Online animation goes way back to Salad Fingers, Newgrounds, and it's been on YouTube for like a long time. But as far as like a series goes, I'm talking like a long form like series and 20 minute episodes. That's hard. Animation's hard, period. A series with continuity and higher productions and requires that level of like being industrious. That is hard. Yet we see things like Lackadaisy, Hell of a Boss, Monkey Wrench, Murder Drones, and the newest entry here being Digital Circus. So Digital Circus was created and directed by Gooseworks, who I've been following her work for a while now, but now Goose has her own show. Uh, Digital Circus is her creation. She's a director. She's the showrunner. And she she's knocking it out of the park. I love the show so far. Only one episode, only the pilot, but this pilot has like 5 million views within like a day. And that is insane. You look at those results, you look at that engagement and you go, okay, you are onto something. There are TV shows on like network television that gets a fraction of that. But here we are on YouTube, a small team of independent creators just killing it. Again, I can't applaud it enough. I'm here for it. In a day and age where we feel so much fear for the creative driven pursuits, for artists, for writers, uh, it feels good to see something like this get a win. It builds hope. It means a lot more than I think most folks realize. Also, again, it's insane to see Glitch field so many shows. They've done Meta Runners. They are currently still doing uh, Murder Drones. And then they launched Digital Circus. It's insane to see that they have like, like a catalog of, of shows um, currently running at the same time. That's, again, that's like industry level work right there. Insanely impressive. All right, the synopsis for this series. Uh, I, I think some of the viewers watching right now will understand this. Ever heard of something called I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream? Yeah, that sci-fi short like story that was turned into a video game where you have that like rogue AI, Am, who just hates humanity more than anything. And he has like five humans who he's torturing for all of eternity because he like hates humans that much. That's this show in a way. But instead of it being like a rogue, hateful AI, uh, instead it's a ringmaster, a goofy boy AI with teeth and, <laughs> and eyeballs in his mouth, which I love that design, by the way. And from what we can understand just in this pilot, with the mystery just being presented, uh, all these characters outside of the ringmaster, from what we can tell, were previously human or are human with previous lives, who are brought into this universe, this trapped like setting, almost like they're stuck in limbo, where they can't really sleep, they don't need to eat, they're just constantly sitting there, being played with and goofed around with, with this ringmaster, and that's the reality, just an AI messing with humans. Not nearly as hateful as Am, thank God, or at least so far, but this is like a dark comedy with surrealism in it, you know, surreal comedy as well. I fear where this can go because Glitch is not afraid of getting dark with their art. So my fan theory is the following. I think that Pomni, that Jax, that all these characters that are stuck in limbo are programmers who uh, worked on creating the Ringmaster character AI. And now they've got trapped by their own creation, the hubris of humanity as it goes. And now they're paying the price. I think that's what's up. That's my fan theory. And I think my fan theory is better than yours. So shut the hell up, uh, <laughs> Glitch Production subreddits. I'm right and you're wrong. Can we just all make little clown girls suffer uh, in unity? Not that unity. <laughs> that unity. 
But honestly, the mystery here is so compelling. As soon as I was told like what the synopsis is, when I watched the pilot, I'm like, oh, okay, Pomni is like freaking out because she lost her memory. She knows she's not supposed to belong there. Something's wrong. And you have these other characters who have been there for a while who are like, yeah, she'll get used to it. Uh, I like that because it makes me immediately go, well, what's your story? What's your story? What's going on here? You have that built in, you know, planting the seeds of, of curiosity, of intrigue. So that's a good way to start a pilot is to just throw you into the mall and then explain it as you go. Not to, not to tell you, but to show you. And you just even see it in the expressions of the characters how there's certain levels of madness they have like, you know, incurred over the years, you know, some more than others. I gotta say though, uh, when it comes to a series, when it comes to just animation in general, the power of character designs, right? Uh, these designs are fantastic. I love them. Uh, especially Pomni. She's very expressive. Love those eyes. Love her like doubt and uncertainty. Uh, she's adorable. I, I like how her eyes are so expressive too. Uh, I like the little pinwheels in her eyes as, as the pupils. Great touch. I like how when she goes insane, it's little scratchy eyes. I like the Jack's bunny design. Uh, the ringmaster with his eyes and mouth. There's some excellent character designs going on here. But these designs are even like punched up a lot by the animation. So exceptionally expressive. That goes a long way. It's always in the eyes, folks. It really is. The, the eyes go the distance, like without fail. And as far as the 3D animation goes, it's almost like a love letter to 3D animation, where it's like, it's very bright, uh, very saturated. It's a world where you just, from the brightness, you can't even hide, almost like a fluorescent kind of like setting, where it's like you're just constantly being observed, which I think is kind of the point. And you see like lots of clipping, you see 3D animation errors, but on purpose, that's kind of the joke. It's digital circus after all, that works quite well. And also, speaking of quite well, uh, actually, let's even call it excellent. The voice acting, phenomenal. I love the voice acting. Uh, Michael Kovac, once again, just knocking it out of the park, along with these other voice actors who are just nailing it. Uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, Lizzie Freeman's been making a name for herself too. Uh, I, I have a lot of respect for these online uh, voice actors, who so just voice actors professionally, uh, doing their you know work here on the online space and showing you that's not just you know it's not just supplemental work. This is legit, like now this is where it is, folks. The online space is where it's at. This is where you can make a name for yourself and make a career. So I think it's exciting, both for the animators, the writers, the directors, the voice actors, just everyone involved in the series. They're doing some awesome work and are blazing a trail as far as I'm concerned. And it's not even just the English voice actors. There's like multiple dubs for this series, like readily available, like with its launch, like German, Indonesian, Ukrainian, Russian, Spanish, Chinese. That's impressive. That's good craftsmanship. That's quality. Uh, and that's them going the extra mile, which is a lot about how like dedicated they are to their craft. So a lot of respect for that. So overall, I highly recommend Digital Circus. It's fantastic. It feels like a treat to see something of this caliber and this quality on YouTube for free. Uh, go support it, go watch it, go support the other independent studios and artists and creators out there trying to make a name for themselves, trying to work outside of the big corporations who, you know, let's be real here, typically cancel your uh, streaming service and, and series on said streaming service. So uh, it, this is where it really matters, folks. We got to really rally our support for these online creators and help them get the spotlight and support that they need to succeed because it, it's a rising tide kind of situation where it lifts all boats. So uh, go check out Digital Circus. I will be following this series along with all the other ones from Glitch Productions. And uh, I guess we'll see how this story pans out because this is just the beginning, I can imagine. And it's probably going to go the distance. Probably going to see this little clown girl suffer in ways... Uh, that I would never wish upon my worst enemy, most likely. Or am I getting too dark with that, with that, you know, suspicion? Nah, it's glitch. They're plenty dark.